Susan Kraku with Mizana from Indonesia. So in this video, I want to react to 15 things you didn't know about Suleiman the Magnificent. Do you know guys, Suleiman the Magnificent and Horan Sultan really vanished in Indonesia because in several years ago, in Indonesia was aired the Magnificent Century Turkey serial drama. And there are so many fans of Hurem Sultan. But in this video, I want to react to Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. Alright, let's start to react. This is Billionaire Mondays. Every Monday, we present you with another billionaire. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Suleiman the Magnificent. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Alexers. It's time to flip through some history pages today. Those who paid attention in history class might remember who Suleiman the Magnificent was, but if you don't know, well, you're in the right place. Suleiman was born on the northeastern coast of Turkey, along the coast of the Black Sea. His okay. birth date is not 100% accurate, but most scene. people believe it's on November 6th, 1494. At seven years old, he was sent to study in Constantinople, and later, at 17, he was already appointed as the governor of the first Kaffa. Seven years later, wow. when his father died, he took the throne of the Ottoman Empire as the 10th Sultan. Ten he was one Sultan. of the most respectable and long-reigning okay. sultans of the Ottoman Empire. For 46 years, Suleiman perfected laws, he invested in education, and he led his people into one of the biggest expansions of the empire. He was loved, feared, and well-known on three continents, from the seas of the Mediterranean to the Red Sea and through the Persian Gulf. But let's just dig in and learn, shall we? Here are 15 things you didn't know about the greatest ruler of the fallen empire. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Number one, he ruled over 25 million people. Wow. The Ottoman sure. Empire controlled Southeastern That's Europe, a lot. Western Asia, and North African regions between the 14th and early 20th centuries. Their influence and culture is still found throughout these regions in various areas such as music, art, language, food, or customs. As the world entered into the 20th century, the empire slowly toned down to be the country we know today as Turkey. During Suleiman the Magnificent's 40-year reign, he ruled over 25 million people on three continents. His empire was rich, diverse, and always expanding. He wanted to take over wow. Europe, but unfortunately the Assage stopped at Vienna for good. Number 2. The laws he passed remained active for hundreds of years after his death. Being the Sultan for such a long period of time means that he went through all sorts of problems and challenges. Every new ruler wants to leave his print and legacy, but most of their reforms are quickly forgotten or improved upon. Suleiman was very active and involved in the lawmaking process of the Ottoman Empire. His administrative reforms allowed some critical changes, such as putting together the Ottoman Code of Laws, mercy, and more rights to Christian immigrants better taxes for traders and importers, and education. Suleiman built schools and invested a lot of effort and money into culture. Okay. His legacy as one of the most this important lawmakers remains intact over 300 years after school. his death. His work as ruler of the Ottoman Empire was so immaculate that his followers didn't feel the need to change it. Number 3. He was a poet and an art lover. Although a lot of people think of emperors as being cruel and bloodthirsty, it's not always the case. And even if they're conquerors and always on the battlefield, that doesn't mean that deep inside they're not still human. Historians have a way of telling and twisting the facts so that some people appear larger than life or more cruel. They're telling stories, and stories often bend the truth. Suleiman was a very different ruler. He was artistic, a poet, and an art lover. A lot of his poems and verses He's were used so as proverbs by his people. He was fluent in Persian and Turkish, and while he was the Sultan, art and culture were acknowledged and supported. His palace must have been a museum. Number 4. He befriended and made a Prime Minister his slave. While studying in Constantinople, 
Suleiman received a slave in the name of Ibrahim, a Christian immigrant from Prague. Unlike most people, they got along and became close friends. As Suleiman became the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, he took Ibrahim with him and made him Grand Vizier, or Prime Minister wow. as we call them today. So the two achieved great things together and were on good terms for years, until Ibrahim grew a little too large for his safety. He took advantage of his friendship with Suleiman and manipulated him to kill certain people and trust him with battles. In the end, Ibrahim's conspiracy against him came to light, and he was sentenced to death and executed. Number 5. His it's net true. worth was unknown. As Suleiman became the Magnificent, he also became very rich. But wow. how rich? Well, the amount of money, gold, and possessions he owned as the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire is unknown. There aren't any records or estimations of his fortune, but we can assume and speculate based on what we know for sure. Our estimation places him in the billionaire status, because he ruled over 25 million people in around 10 countries. He built schools, mosques, and palaces. He went to war and had a fleet. And as lifestyle goes, he had a big harem, several children, and a lavish lifestyle, so he wasn't your regular king. Also, the Ottomans used to get taxes from countries that were under them, so the Sultan always had money coming in. Number 6. He planned to turn St. Peter's Basilica into a mosque. Having experienced great success in battles, Suleiman wanted more. Ruling over the Middle East, North Africa and Eastern Europe was not enough for him. He wanted the whole world. As he conquered land by land, his plan was to get to Italy and then conquer Italy. all of Christianity. His fleet was very successful and ambitious, but as you might know, his plan didn't go as he wanted it to. The Christians were more powerful than his army and fleet and managed to stop their invasion. Suleiman's plan was to invade Italy, impose Islam to everyone, and turn St. Peter's Basilica into a mosque. It would have been the biggest hit for Christianity and Europe, but fortunately it didn't happen. I guess some things were just impossible, even for Suleiman. Number 7. He married a woman from his harem. One of the most outrageous things Suleiman did, and remains so in history, was his marriage with one of the women from his harem. Muslims are known to be polygamous, and back in the 15th century, harems were very normal, especially among powerful and rich men. Keep in mind that harems consist of multiple women such as wives, concubines, mothers, sisters, or children. Suleiman had a harem too, and one of his concubines from it rose to be very powerful. He fell deeply in love with Haram, a beautiful redhead Christian immigrant. She was in fact Polish, but brought into the harem at the age of 15. She got under his skin so deep that he broke all the rules and married her. He only had two wives, but she was the most powerful and his favorite. Number 8. He killed his elder son. Wow. As mentioned before, Suleiman had two wives and multiple concubines. He had 14 children, which is quite a generous selection for his throne. Half of them died very young, though, due to disease and other problems, so only seven were left to become the next sultan. With so many heirs, Suleiman sent his firstborn away to rule over far-off lands, a common practice for that time. In fact, he sent him away to make sure his other sons, of he and Haram, have better chances at the throne. He loved her more, so naturally he wanted those children to be at an advantage. This plan worked out well because Haram and others conspired against Mustafa, the son they sent away, and got Suleiman so suspicious about him that he killed the boy. This just goes to show how sneaky and manipulative Haram was, and how afraid of his sons Suleiman was too. In this family, being Sultan was more important than anything else. Number 9. Coffee shops appeared during this time. Okay, coffee shop. Real coffee lovers no. know all the diversity and brewing techniques. One of the most flavorful and special coffees is Turkish coffee. Turkish you can find coffee. it in different places, wow, but it doesn't to compare try it. with the original one, of course. This recipe is special because it uses finely ground coffee and sugar while wow. boiling. It's original from the days of the Ottoman Empire, but during Suleiman's reign, coffee shops started appearing throughout Turkey. What's even more fascinating about them 
is the dried fine grains of coffee left on the mug were used to tell fortunes. Older women used to read the future of those who drank the coffee, a tradition that some still used to do years after the Ottoman Empire. A tradition that some still use the future of those who drank the coffee. A tradition that some still used to do years after the Ottoman Empire disappeared. Number ten, Suleiman lived in a lavish palace. Lavish palace. Because every sultan is worthy of a palace. When Suleiman took the throne, he was immediately checked into Topkapi Palace, or the New Palace, as they called it. The palace complex consisted of four main courtyards and many smaller buildings that were homes for the sultan's harem, the grand vizier, and other officials. It was also the palace where important meetings and decisions were made. Of course, the palace had the best view in the city, overlooking the Bosphorus, Bosphorus. high walls, amazing gardens, wow. and a lot of history. It used to hide the imperial treasury and all the wealth of the sultan. Today, the palace still holds the great architecture and some remnants of the era. It's now turned into a museum. And Aluxers, speaking of leaders and conquerors, have a look at our video: the top ten leaders who wanted to conquer the world. There are some great and controversial men listed there, so you might want to check it out by clicking in the top right corner. Number eleven. His death was hidden for two months. Why? The Sultan in the Ottoman Empire was the second most powerful and important man after Allah. Suleiman, being the tenth Sultan, was also head of the army and present on the battlefield. The most important battles were won in his presence, but since he was so important, his death was kept a secret for almost two months. Suleiman died on the battlefield in a tent due to age and illness. However, in order to keep spirits high. The news was hidden from everyone. It happened while the Ottomans were assessing Hungary. His body was buried back in Istanbul, but his heart and main organs were buried in Hungary, under the tent where he died at 71 years of age. Some claim to have found the remains of Suleiman in northern Hungary, but his official tomb still stands tall in Istanbul. Number twelve. Turkey produced a massive, successful TV show after、yes. the Sultan's life. This TV show really. Soap operas and TV、uh, shows are big、innovation. right now. Everyone is binge watching several shows on Netflix. So what about a historical show about Suleiman the Magnificent? Of course, that show does exist, and it's a massive success in Turkey, Latin America, and some Eastern European countries. He's also featured、so、in historical documentaries and video games,、really、but the four-season soap opera that was broadcast all over the world was the most successful. It had over 200 million viewers and ranked very high in a lot of countries. The show grasped over 750 million dollars worldwide and is now available on Netflix. If we've made you curious enough, number thirteen. He had Barbarossa as an admiral for his large fleet. Yes,、fight. Barbarossa. Suleiman had the best men in his army,、wow. but since they wanted more and more lands, he also needed a good fleet. He found Hayred and Barbarossa, a brave man that secured all their naval battles across the Mediterranean Sea. His nickname was a fact inherited from his brother, who had a red beard, and it stuck with him too. He had a successful career as admiral for the Ottoman Empire. Under Suleiman, his name was well known all over the world as a fearless fighter, and the name that everyone associated with many military operations. He's even mentioned in video games, movies, books, and ships. Number fourteen, Suleiman and his women wore the finest clothes. Monarchs、wow. usually have special wardrobes that allow them to express、wow. their status and wealth. They wear the finest materials, expensive jewelry. Luxurious cars and everything is custom made. It's always been like that, even in the 16th century. Being the sultan of such a big empire, it's obvious that his outfits and the they only used imported silk from Persia or other parts of the world, and had a special dressing dedicated to them. They only used imported silk from Persia or other parts of the world, and had a special okay, dressing dedicated to them. Even after their times ended. The Topkapi Palace still holds a museum with all the dresses and accessories that they were wearing back then. As for Suleiman, you can see in all、so、the paintings and depictions that he was always well dressed and always looking his best, just like a king. Number fifteen, he had a four-tiered crown made just for him. 
When Suleiman took the throne at 26 years old, the Ottoman Empire was just starting to get bigger and bigger. He was the 10th Sultan and had great plans for his people. His empire was rich and prosperous, so he could afford a few updates to his image. Most kings and sultans wore some sort of crown, but he had a different view on that. Suleiman ordered a four-tiered crown to be made just for him. He could have a three-tiered <laughs> crown, but one so something perfect. different, more opulent, and something that would make him bigger than the Pope. He was very competitive and ambitious, a little yes. like Alexander the Great, who so was ambitious. his role model. Uh, for perfect. more than 500 years, the Ottoman Empire was indeed one of the greatest powers in the world. They were experienced sailors, warriors, architects, and traders. What they built still stands today, in spite of everything that's happened in modern history. The sultans that followed Suleiman were not as great or magnificent as he was. Now, because we want Well, guys, that is Suleiman the Magnificent. Actually, I just heard about him from Turkey's serial drama The Magnificent Century and not finishing it. But he's really famous in Indonesia because of the Turkey's serial drama The Magnificent Century. And also, several weeks ago, I have reacted to Hayreddin Barbarossa, who was a Muslim pirate in Suleiman the Magnificent era. And now I found out 15 facts about him. And it was amazing. And I think he is multi-talented. He's so smart. He loves art. He loves music. He also care about his look. He always wear fancy and good outfit. He is really rich in this era. And Ottoman Empire in this era. Really magnificent era. Alright guys, thanks for watching my video. But don't forget to like, comment and also subscribe. Okay, see you in the next video.